All right, America is not Babylon, moment number four. This one we're going to talk about what the Jesuits themselves said in 1582. Hmm, how about that? I have here <clears throat> the original and true Reims New Testament of uh, 1582, Anno Domini 1582. This is one put out by the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, you have to be a Catholic to even buy this thing. I got it, and uh, I'm not a Catholic, but I told them I was a Catholic. Just, you know, they, they had on the, the site where you get this thing, it was like, are you a Catholic or a Protestant? I went, Catholic. <laughs> I want to make sure I get their actual one. So, uh, I'll show you. Going back here to Revelation chapter 17, I'm actually going to show you their footnotes. The reason this, this thing comes in four volumes. This is uh, the New Testament and then the uh, Dewey Old Testament there. This is the Reims New Testament. And uh, the Dewey Old Testament is three volumes, so it's four volumes set. And uh, the reason that they're so big, almost like a phone book in size, um, is because, depending on where you live, um, but uh, the reason they're so big is because they have so many footnotes. Can't have you just reading the text. And it's funny because I did a whole study on this using the Reims New Testament, and it actually debunks a lot of Roman Catholic, the whole Mass and all that other stuff, from their own source. But here we have... Revelation chapter 17. <clears throat> there you have it. And over here, begin the footnotes. Let's read this. Babylon. In the end, in the end of St. Peter's first epistle, where the apostle dateth it at Babylon, which the ancient writers, as we, we there noted, affirmed to be meant of Rome, the Protestants will not in any wise have it so, because they would not be driven to confess that Peter was ever, Peter ever was at Rome. But here, for that, they think it maketh for their opinion that the Pope is Antichrist, and Rome the city, the seat and city of Antichrist. They will needs have Rome to be this Babylon, this great whore, and this purple harlot. For such fellows in the exposition of Holy Scripture be led only by their pre prejudicate opinions and heresies, to which they draw all things without all indifferency and sincerity." And of course, they're they're saying stupid things there in the beginning. That that uh, if you if you won't say that Peter was there in Rome, other places, then you can't say he was here. People are warped in their heads. But the whole thing is, you know, I am not a Protestant reformer. All right, uh, we read the quotes in the other video about Oliver Cromwell um, saying you can't reform that which God has said He's going to destroy. Very very true. I would protest. You know, I would join with the Protestant movement protesting the abuses of Rome, but I don't say, well, let's protest the abuses and then reform it, make it better. Uh-uh. Protest the abuses and we'll have God destroy it in the future, Revelation 17. Well, Revelation 18, actually, going into 19. But that's what he's, th these Jesuits are saying here. They're saying the Protestants are evil because they're trying to make Rome Babylon. Let's continue. But St. Augustine, Eretus, and other writers most commonly expounded neither of Babylon itself, a city of Chaldea, or Egypt, nor of Rome, or, of, or any one city which may be so called spiritually as Jerusalem before chapter 11 is named spiritual Sodom and Egypt, but of the general society of the impious and of those that prefer the terrene kingdom and commodity of the world before God and eternal felicity. The author of the commentaries upon the apocalypse, apocalypse set forth in St. Ambrose's name uh, writeth thus, This great whore sometimes, sometimes signifieth Rome, especially which at that time when the apostle wrote this did persecute the church of God. But otherwise it, is, it signifieth the whole city of the devil, that is the universal core of the reprobate. Tertullian also taketh it for Rome, thus Babylon, saith he in St. John, is a figure of the city of Rome, being so great, so proud of the empire and the destroyer of the saints, which is plainly spoken of that city when it was heathen, the head of the Tyrrhene dominion of the world, the persecutor of the apostles and their successors, the seat of Nero, Domitian, and like Christ's special enemies, the sink of idolatry and false worship of the pagan gods. Then was it Babylon when St. John wrote this, and then was Nero and the rest figures of Antichrist, and that city the resemblance of the principal place 
wheresoever it be that Antichrist shall reign in about the latter end of the world. <laughs> Very wordy back then in those days. But uh, what, what they're basically saying is that yes, Babylon in John's day was represented by Rome. Okay, because they were bad and pagan. But now that the Vatican is there, it's not bad and pagan anymore. And Babylon today, in our modern world, is whatever impious city or bad places out there. It's just kind of like wherever bad people are, that's Babylon. <laughs> you know, okay. John was seeing future events. He was not writing about the, the pagan Rome of his day. And by the way, the pagan Rome of his day just transformed into pagan Roman Catholicism. It says here in the next paragraph, Now to apply that to the Roman Church and Apostolic See, either now or then, which was spoken only of the terrene state of the city, as it was the seat of the emperor and not of Peter, when it did slay above 30 popes, Christ's vicars. They, they call, a lot of times they'll call early Christians, you know, uh, popes. You know, they, they say that Peter was a pope, the first pope. <laughs> yeah, right. He was married. You know, the things that Peter wrote, he didn't, he didn't go around transubstantiation and, you know, whatever, listen to the confessions of people and stuff like this. Catholicism is a, is a circus without a tent. Um, one after another, an endeavor to destroy the whole church, that is most blasphemous and foolish. You know, and they go on and on and on here. We're not going to read all this stuff. It'd take longer than I want to put into this video. But just to show you the, the wicked Satanism that, that uh, is prevalent here and why these people are so bent on changing the identity of who Babylon is. Remember we read about in the introduction the thing about being drunken with the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus? It says here, Drunken of the blood, it is plain that this woman signifieth the whole corpse of all, or core of all, the persecutors that have and shall shed so much blood of the just, of the prophets, apostles, and other martyrs from the beginning of the world to the end. The Protestants foolishly expound it of Rome, for that there they put heretics to death and allow of their punishment in other countries, but their blood is not called the blood of saints no more than the blood of thieves, man-killers, and other malefactors, for the shedding of which by order of justice no commonwealth shall answer. I've shown that before. I'll show you the other little footnote here, little side note thing down at the bottom. Putting heretics to death is not to shed the blood of saints. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So in other words, ancient pagan Rome in John's day, first century, they were represented by as Babylon. But modern papal Rome is not Babylon. And in fact, when, when they kill heretics, that's not really shedding the blood of saints. That's what they're saying. And that's why you have all these servants of the Vatican that come out and uh, try to cover up for their masters. How about a newer edition here? This is the, this is another Roman Catholic Bible, New American Bible, St. Joseph edition. This is one I've showed in other studies. How about that? Lord, the all-seeing eye. Yeah. Okay, not my Lord. Let's go to Revelation 17. Okay, Babylon the Great. Uh, there you have Rome and the Empire, that great city, or the great city there. Babylon, a symbolic name of Rome, is graphically described as the great harlot. Okay, so again, you're seeing, you know, seven hills there. It's actually seven mountains, but in the King James, but it's Rome. See, even the Roman Catholic Bibles have to admit that, yeah, it lines up perfectly with Rome, the city of Rome. I mean, only an idiot would think that a city that sits on seven mountains could somehow be America. Or New York City with the United Nations. I mean, genuinely, if they genuinely believe it from their heart, they're an idiot. Okay? Uh, what's the other option? They're a liar. They're a deceiver. They work for the Vatican. Show you 
show you one other one here just for a little fun twist here we have the uh, whoop, I'm gonna have to zoom out New Revised Standard Version Catholic Youth Bible isn't that wonderful here we have uh, Revelation 17 there's 16 verse 3 there you have 17 okay says here, the sins of empires. In John's coded language, the horror called Babylon in chapter 17 is Rome, a city built on seven hills. Mountain is the right word there. She is dressed in collars that symbolize her royalty, purple, and her obscene and immoral behavior, scarlet. Her golden pearls are symbols of her wealth and excessive luxury. The blasphemous names on her forehead are the titles that should be given to God, but are given to the emperor instead by calling her Babylon. John is creating a tie with the capital capital of another evil empire from the Old Testament. See the fall of Jerusalem, 2 Kings 25, 1 through 21. The whore is drunk on the blood of the saints who have been killed for their faith. John indicates that her evil is caused by her unrestrained desire for wealth and luxury and her abuse of power. He tells his Christian leaders that they can be hopeful even amid so much suffering because in the end the Lamb Christ will conquer the beast. Since Revelation was written, many other empires have abused their power, including the United States. Consider, for example, its treatment of Native Americans, practice of slavery, and lack of care for the environment. Wait a second here. Um, where in the, in the text, Revelation chapter 17, does it say anything about Native Americans or slavery? You know, talking about the souls of men, I guess, in Revelation 18, that's true. Where does it talk about the thing of Na uh, Native Americans? or lack of care for the environment. And isn't it interesting that a Roman Catholic edition of a Protestant Bible is saying the same things as a certain individuals? They say, you don't want to name names? Oh, of course not. I would never think of naming uh, Stephen Anderson or uh, Ken Hovind or any of the other wicked papal servants. I would never name somebody like that, so don't worry about it. I won't name them. If you're a King James Bible believer, it's very, very clear who is involved in Revelation chapter 17. And let me just show you something here real quick. This is so important. Remember what the Bible says elsewhere about... Uh, I'm not going to go there, but it talks about vengeance is mine, I will repay. Well, the Lord remembers some things. Revelation chapter 16, verse 19 in the King James Bible. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Babylon is described in chapter 17. Chapter 18 talks about how she's destroyed. You go over to chapter 19. And after those things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Now why on earth would there be saints in heaven cheering the destruction of the United Nations building in America when they weren't even killed by Americans? Huh? Explain that one to me. And you say, but over in Revelation 17 it talks about that she's guilty of all the blood that's been saint, you know, shed of the saints and things way back through. Yeah, because you see, Mystery Babylon there, Babylon in Revelation 17, the Roman Catholic system is just the descendant of a long line of satanic movements that go back to ancient Babylon. They're keeping it going. It'd be like a corrupt criminal organization, say the mafia, and you have the old man, whatever, and then you have it coming down through the generations, trading it off, trading it off. It's still the same organization. They're still doing the same things. You have somebody new running it, but it's still the same organization. It started out way back when. And by the way, the mafia is Roman Catholic run. 
you know, it's basically Italian uh, masonry, if you want to get right down to it. But God remembers. He remembers what the Vatican has done to Christians down through the centuries. He remembers it, and he recompenses it. But if you see, if you go for the satanic teaching of these wicked Vatican uh, agents, if you go with their teaching, then apparently the Roman Catholic Church has been exonerated of everything. And God forgets what they did. And God doesn't pay them back. Only those Christians that have been killed by America or the United Nations since 1945. Anything done before that, well, it's just been absolved. It's gone, apparently. Do not fall for the lies of these Vatican agents. Don't fall for them.